In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you exactly how to run Google ads for any local service-based businesses. Now, why should you listen to me and watch this full video? Why should you learn from me? Well, I actually run my own Google ads agency that has now generated me, the business has generated me over seven figures in the last about three years. I started my Google ads agency about three years ago and been fortunate enough to grow it from nothing to now over a seven figure business. Alongside from that, I've, I've also managed about $7 million in Google ads spending. So good hands. And I'm about to share with you my strategies, tricks, and and tips on exactly how to run Google ads, whether you are a Google ads agency owner looking to start one, or maybe you are a, a local service-based business looking to run Google ads for yourself. Nonetheless, I'm gonna be jumping into my screen today. I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step on how to do everything. So let's go ahead and jump right into my computer screen. Clicksees is one of the leading click fraud prevention services to keep your Google ads and Facebook ads protected. They automatically monitor, detect, and even block frauds from visiting your Google or Facebook ad, from visiting your Google, Facebook, or even Bing ad, so that you don't have to waste your money on bot clicks, your competitor clicking on your ad, and you'll be able to save your budget on genuine traffic only. I personally use ClickSees for all of my clients' ad accounts. We run a lot of Google ads, and we can see you know how many clicks are being blocked and how much money we were able to save by using ClickSees. So if you run any kind of Google, Facebook, or Bing ads, make sure to have a click bot detection software on. I highly recommend ClickSees. And so you can check them out using my link in the description below. Now back to the video. All right, so here we are in the uh, Google Ads. Now, if you are new and you don't have an account yet, there are two accounts that you can choose from, okay? So for example, if you are, you know, if you're just looking to run Google Ads for yourself, your business, maybe you're a plumber, a lawyer, and you wanna run ads for yourself, then go ahead and just create yourself a Google Ad account, right? And if you don't know how to get here, it's really just ads.google.com. And it'll take you to this page where you can start now, you create your account and you have your ad account. And the second option that you have is, let's say you wanna run ads for other people, other businesses, right? And you wanna be able to manage that. Um, you're going to create a an ad account known as the MCC account, which is also known as the manager's account. And from here, you can manage multiple ad accounts all within one, right? So it's gonna be a big umbrella and you know you got all your clients accounts under that one umbrella. So if you are an agency, a marketing agency, you wanna run ads for other people, you want the MCC uh, manager's account, all right? If you don't know how to get here, all you really need to do is go to Google, type in Google Ads MCC, and it will be the first one that pops up, manage multiple Google Ads account. You can just click on that and create an account here, okay? So from there, that is how you manage multiple ad accounts if you are a marketing agency, right? So it doesn't. once you create your account, it really doesn't matter how you sign in. You can sign in from this one or the uh, manager's ad account. I have a manager's account, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in here. All right, so once you have created your manager's account, it's going to start looking something like like this, okay? Don't worry if it looks a little confusing to you right now. If you are on a single ad account, meaning you, you know, create the account for yourself, it might look a little different, but we will get there, okay? So don't worry about any of that right now. Uh, and really quickly, I just wanna show you here, manage in ad account spendings here. So uh, $6.8 million in ad spend, close to $7 million. So you're, like I said, you are in good hands. We have a, a ton of data that I'm gonna be able to share with you. Uh, and $7 million in ad spend is just crazy. You know, just we worked with all types of clients, mainly local service-based businesses, lawyers, plumbers, auto detailing, and a few other niches. I don't really remember just because we work with so many clients now, but majority of our clients are plumbers and uh, lawyers, criminal defense, family, personal injury, accident lawyers, and things like that. So if you are a, you know, one of those in those categories and you're trying to look for, run Google ads yourself, or maybe you need help running Google ads for one of those um, type of niches, then feel free to reach out to me and my team. We'll be more than happy to help, you know, run your Google ads account, audit it and things like that. So nonetheless here, MCC ad account and single ad account is going to be very similar. Just going to take one little step. All right. So if you are in the MCC ad account right now, then what you wanted to do when you want to start running ads for a new client or for somebody else. What you want to do is click on accounts here. And from there, you're going to want to hit the plus sign and you want to create a new account. Okay. If you are running ad account for yourself, don't worry, we're going to get there. All right. So you're going to click on create new account and you can create the ad account 
for your client. Now, let's say that your client already has a uh, ad account, okay? Then you have the option to link to their existing account. You know, sometimes you want to log into their ad account because they already, maybe they ran ads in the past and so they already have data. And so when they already have data, you can log in there and see what they've tried in the past, what's worked, what's not worked, and then you can kind of make adjustments for them. So that's the helpful part of linking to your client's existing ad account. So it doesn't really matter how you want to go about it. You can create a new one or a link to an existing. In this case, we're just going to create a new account. I'm going to create, I'm going to say test. And from there, you know, select Google's type. We're going to keep it as Google ads account. Okay. A lot of people make the mistake of running smart campaigns or, you know, giving their power to Google and allowing Google to run ads for them. And Google is a business just like anybody else, right? They are going to have their own best interests, right? And so they're going to obviously want to get advertisers to spend the most amount of dollar possible on their platform to be the most to be profitable, right? They are one of the most profitable businesses in the world. And that's because a lot of advertisers are on their platform, right? So we want to keep control of our ad account. We want to make sure we know how much we're spending, how much we allow Google to spend. And we want to be in control of our campaigns, all right? So in order to do that, Google ads account, smart campaigns, we're going to allow Google to kind of control it a little bit more. It's for more people, you know, want to be more hands off. Google to do take over, do the thing. My things might cost a little bit more. I recommend Google Ads account. Okay, select your time zone, currency. You can invite users if you want to. I'm gonna hit save and continue. All right, I'm gonna hit confirm, and I'm going to have to verify on my phone. Here. All right, so now that we have created the account, it's gonna take us to the billing configuration now. And from here, what you want to do is really just uh, enter your payment method. OK, I'm not going to go too deep into this because I don't want, you know, all my clients uh, information to be put out there. But essentially, just connect your credit card. If you're running ads for yourself, if you are running ads for your cl a client, then you want to connect your client's credit card or payment method to here. OK, in the billings. All right. So I'm not going to submit anything because this is a test, but the test ad account should still have been created. So I'll be able to log in there. So once you have submitted your billing, you create your account. Now we are officially in the ad account. Congratulations. You now officially have a Google ad account that you can run ads out of and start creating campaigns. So if you are running ads for yourself, you know, you're probably starting right here. All right. So that's why I said, you know, just give me a minute. We're going to get there in a little bit. Okay. So this is, everyone should be on the same page as of this step. So super simple guys. I mean, we got the campaign. I mean, that's the only option it gives us, right? We can click campaign here and we can, you know, create a campaign, right? If you don't see the sidebar, you just got to click this arrow. There might be a little side arrow right there. Boom. There you go. You can be able to see all your campaigns, ad groups, and in this sidebar here, right? So let's go ahead and jump in and create a new campaign. Now, I have a lot of experience in running ads for lawyers, and that's where we've been a majority of, you know, that's a majority of our clients are lawyers. So I'm going to be running a campaign exactly for lawyers. So you might get a little sneak peek on how it works. Now, I'm not going to give you the full thing, but the basics of it. All right. So what is the objective of your campaign? Is it website traffic? Is it leads? Is it to create some type of brand awareness, uh, right? Create a campaign without goals guidance. Now, if you are a lead generation marketing agency, or you just want to generate leads, then what you want to do is click on the leads objective, right? Fair enough. Super simple. Okay. Don't worry about all this. Now we can worry about that later. Choose how you'll gather leads, phone calls from your ads. Let's take it. You know, code require. Phone calls from your ads. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So I'm not going to go into deep into this, uh, but I will show you how to get to this in a little bit later. All right. So let's just keep it simple. And we want our campaign to be a leads objective. All right. So from here, you're going to get more options. If you want to do YouTube ads, you can select a video. You have discovery where it would be on YouTube, Gmail. Performance Max is a newer campaign type, right? You can reach audience across all Google with a single campaign display. Now, what is the difference? Okay. Discovery, performance display. It's basically on Google's like partner network. You know, anytime you're on like random website, you might see ads on the side and stuff like that. That is an example of display and performance max campaigns. If you're just trying to generate leads for your business, you just need a search campaign. Okay. Just keep it simple. Right. So search campaign, 
don't worry about this, you know, store visits, website visits, app downloads. I'm just going to keep it really simple. We want to generate leads. All right. So let's generate leads. Okay. For a campaign name, it's very important that you keep names of campaigns, ad groups, ads, all very tight, all very relevant. Okay. And this is going to be very important later on because this is how you get a high relevancy score on your Google campaign. And the higher the relevancy score of your campaign, the cheaper your, the cost is going to be because when let's say you run a campaign, you run your ads or launch, right? And someone searches up, let's say we're running criminal defense lawyer campaign. Okay. And someone searches up criminal defense lawyer, then we want everything about our ad to include the word criminal defense lawyer in it, including the campaign name, the ad group name to the ads in itself, and even that specific keyword on the landing page. And that's going to make our campaign as relevant as possible. And so that's how Google rewards us right now. Let's just say for example, you know, we're, we want to run ads for criminal defense lawyers, but our campaign name is, I don't know, doggy treats, right? Something irrelevant. Okay. And ad group might be something irrelevant doggy treats, but we are running ads for criminal defense lawyers. Our relevancy score is going to be very low and Google is going to think that our ads aren't relevant to the what people are searching for right google is the number one search engine for a reason and so they want everything to be as relevant as possible they want to make sure that when someone searches up something on google that they're getting exactly what they looked up for okay so it's very important here we stay on topic stay on track stay on the same page all right so criminal defense lawyer okay that is what we're running ads on our bidding strategy okay so we're gonna have multiple uh different types of clicks here i mean multiple different methods here we have clicks and impression shares and it looks like google you know did take away a lot of our options here because essentially what we want to do is we want to actually do manual cost per click okay and what that means is we're manually bidding on how much we want to pay for that specific keyword now, Google doesn't give us an option right now because they're being very sneaky here. They want to have control over your bidding, okay? And when you give control to Google's bidding, they're going to spend however they like and you know they might profit a little bit more. So since we don't have any uh, options here besides clicks and impression share, we will normally start the campaign off of clicks, okay? And what that just means is that Google is going to bid accordingly to get you as many clicks as possible on your ads, all right? So we can set a maximum cost per click uh, bid limit if we want. Um, if you understand the market pricing on your cost per click, then you can paste that here. But if you don't, then you can just allow Google to run it for you for now, okay? And the reason for that is because, let's just say I only want to spend $1 per click, okay? Now, I already know that a keyword for criminal defense lawyers is very competitive. It's gonna range anywhere between 30 bucks, 40 bucks, all the way up to $100 per click. Now, the average cost per click for that specific keyword is between 40 and $100, and I only spend a maximum of a dollar. That means Google cannot run your ads, okay? So if you're not getting any traffic, it means that you are under bidding, okay? That means Google cannot find anybody that's going to click on your ad for $1, okay? And that's why it's important that, you know, don't just put a random number in here if you don't understand the market and don't put something outrageously high because you might be overspending, right? So let's go ahead and just turn that off for now. Let's hit next. Search network, we're gonna uncheck both of these, right? We don't wanna run ads on search partners or display network. We want specifically just search network, meaning someone goes to Google, types on the Google search, and that's how our ads are going to pop up. I found that leads from Google search partners and display networks, yes, the cost per lead is gonna be cheaper. The, the lead cost is cheaper, but also the lead quality is gonna be cheaper as well. So we wanna stay high intent. We wanna stay as relevant as possible and we want high quality leads. And in order to do that, we're gonna uncheck both of those for now. Locations, okay? What we want to do is enter another location. We don't want to target all the uh, all countries. I've seen that mistake before and a lot of money has been gets spent really quickly there. And we don't want to target all the US and Canada unless, you know, maybe you do want to target all of the US, I don't know. But for most local service-based businesses, you're probably most likely 99% of the time, you're gonna to want to run ads targeting your local market, okay? And we want it to be 
as high intent and that's how we get high intent as possible leads so let's just say that my criminal defense lawyer is located here in los angeles all right so there we go we're going to go ahead and type in los angeles and we can do radius or the location of Los Angeles. So let me just show you what each one looks like, okay? So if we type in Los Angeles location, it's gonna target all of Los Angeles here. And that's all that blue mark area is what we're targeting. If we wanna target a radius of Los Angeles, type in Los Angeles and we'll target, and that's what it's gonna look like. You can target everyone within that circle, okay? You can click on this pencil here and you can adjust the radius, all right? And you can see that circle is getting adjusted accordingly, okay? So that's what that looks like. You can also adjust it here before you submit, all right? So let's go ahead and you only wanna target 10 miles around Los Angeles, okay? You can also type in your, your address, your specific address, all right? So you can also do that. You don't have to target by specific cities or anything. If you wanna do a specific address around your brick and mortar or whatever it is, you can also do that because maybe you own an auto shop, maybe you own a barber shop, right you only want to target people i don't know within a 10 15 mile radius okay so you can do that you can x that uh you know you make changes here and once you're done that looks good hit save from here you want to click on location options okay this is so 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 important guys a lot of advertisers make this mistake and i'm hoping you guys are watching this video through do not skip because these little details is what makes or break your campaign okay so it's really important that you do not skip this video and if you found any value so far drop a thumbs up because it's going to help the algorithms and help push my uh youtube channel all right so location options you want to click on that i'm dropping a lot of gold for you guys so what you guys want to target is not the recommended okay again google is going to recommend what's going to get you the most traffic yes but also more traffic doesn't mean better quality okay and so with more traffic, you're gonna end up actually spending more than you should really need to, okay? So you don't need to do that. You don't want to target people who are interested, people present or interested in your location. What this means is that if you're if you're targeting here in Los Angeles, someone in New York might search up on Google, you know, Los Angeles criminal defense lawyer, and your ad's gonna show up, right? And the likelihood of them, someone in New York turning into an actual customer client for your business is less likely, all right? So we wanna stay as high intent as possible in order to get the highest quality. So what you wanna do is target present people in or regularly in your target location. And what this means is that we're only targeting people who are present right now in your targeted location, okay? So that means we're getting people in the local area. No more out of state calls, no more irrelevant calls from outside of where we're actually trying to target. So we're going to exclude people who are present or interested in excluded location. So for example, let's say someone that lives in Los Angeles, but they are searching for a criminal defense lawyer in New York, right? We also don't want that, right? Because we only want people who are in our specific location. So that is why we are not gonna do the recommended uh, option here. We're gonna go down and let's see, you can leave all this alone. Don't worry about all that. We're gonna click on more settings here. And for ad rotation, depending on how hands-on you plan on being, you can just leave it as optimized, best performing ads and allow Google to show the best performing ad for you. Because as you run your campaign, you're gonna get a lot of data, right? On what's working, what's not working. And then Google will optimize by showing the ad that converts the most. If you want your ads to rotate in a cycle and you know, you're gonna be going into your ad account and manually see which ad account is running well, then you want to click do not optimize, rotate the ads indefinitely. This is gonna take a little bit more work, but you should be good at optimized performing, prefer best performing ads this is more so that every single ad is being shown equally okay because if you select this option then if google finds an ad that is performing well then they might just start showing that ad a lot more than the other ads so the other ads don't really get a chance to run that's really how that is. So we'll just go ahead and leave that optimized, all right? Start and end date, you can click a, a date where you wanna start, you click the date when you wanna end it, and add schedule, okay? Now, some of, you know, I've talked to clients and they're like, hey, you know, we have an after hours answering machine. We can just run the campaign all day, 24 hours, which is great and all, but we want to run our ads when we have someone available who is trained to do sales 
answering those calls, okay? So when we have calls coming in, we want someone to answer the phone. We don't want the calls to go to, to a voicemail. We don't want the calls to be re redirected or something. You have to have someone trained answer those phone calls, okay? Otherwise, you're gonna be missing out on those leads that you have paid for, and it's just gonna be wasting your money, okay? So run it during business hours, Monday through Fridays or whatever. Um, it's on a 24 hour block here. So adjust it accordingly. So you can break it down. You can add, you know, specific days if you like, right? If you want only one run ads Monday, Wednesday, Fridays from, I don't know, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., right? So make sure the ad schedule is running accordingly to when someone is available answering those calls, okay? Campaign URL options, go ahead and leave that alone. We're gonna click next. Now we are in the ad group section here, okay? And we can go ahead and click that pencil button to rename. Now the ad group name is very, it's gonna be again, specific, all right? So criminal defense lawyers. Now, you know what? No, criminal defense lawyers is the name of the campaign. Now the ad group is, so look at the campaign as one big house, okay? And within that house, there are rooms and each room is a different service, okay? So let's say this big house, one room might be all about DUIs, you know, driving under influence. One room might be about general criminal defense cases. The third room might be all about domestic violence cases, right? So we want to separate those rooms, okay? We don't want to put DUIs, domestic violence, and general criminal defense cases all in one room. We want each room to specialize in a specific product or service, okay? For this ad group, let's just name it DUI, okay? And what that means is that this ad group is going to be all about DUIs, okay? So driving under the influence cases, that's what the cases we're going to try to get. All right, so let's go ahead and let me show you how to use the keyword planner, all right? So we're going to click on tools and settings under planning. We're going to go ahead and right click, open the link in a new tab of the keyword planner. I'm going to get search volume and forecast. You can just name it whatever you like here. I'll just click a and we're gonna click on keyword ideas and if i'm moving too fast go ahead and rewind and watch this video again all right so from here click the pencil button and we want to go oh and x out the us obviously we don't want to do the whole us and for the specific one we're targeting los angeles okay so we're gonna type in los angeles and target that we're gonna hit save and now we want to know how much DUI keywords are we want to know what type of DUI keywords we should include right and so google is going to tell us all of that, which is awesome. We can type in the word DUI, hit enter, and let's get some results, guys. All right, so here are the search keyword ideas, okay? So I typed in DUI, which is a little broad, right? Because if someone searches up DUI, it's very broad. You know, someone just might wanna get some information. Maybe they don't know what DUI stands for. What does DUI mean? Research purposes, I don't know, okay? So what we're gonna do is actually take it a step further, DUI lawyer. So when someone types in the word DUI lawyer, we now know that, you know, this person is much, much more likely looking for a DUI lawyer, okay? And we'll go ahead and add in, we might as well add in, DUI attorney as well, okay? Enter, get results. All right, so the keyword DUI lawyer, I'm gonna show you exactly how to read this report here. All right, so the keyword DUI lawyer gets about on average monthly search of a thousand searches a month, okay, within the Los Angeles area. Three month change, year of year change. That's just how the changes of the search volume. Here's the comp competition, it's medium. And top of page bid, low range, top of page bid, high range, okay? So what this means, guys, is that the key, this specific keyword DUI lawyer is gonna cost you anywhere between $34.50 all the way up to $210, right? It's a huge gap, big range, right? What does that mean? How do I know? what is it going to be now for most niches that are not in the law industry you're going to see very a lot closer it's not going to be as wide okay this is going to be a little bit more competitive and a tougher niche that's why that range is so big but if i typed in the word let's say landscape landscaping company for example and and we've also worked with landscaping companies as well so as you can see here it's going to be a lot smaller right three dollars to seventeen dollars and um, some might be even smaller so it might be like three dollars to between three dollars and eight dollars okay 
I just wanted to show you like it not the numbers aren't gonna be as this skewed okay it's just I'm you know I'm showing you a very more competitive tough niche example so let's go back to the DUI keyword all right what does what does this all mean remember when I talked about re relevancy score right if the higher you are relevant Google is gonna reward you by giving you cheaper costs for clicks and stuff like that, right? So let's say you have everything set up properly, good, your campaign has a high relevancy score and everything looks good. You're going to get your cost per click more towards on the low end, okay? More on the low end. Now, let's say you are running your ads during a competitive time, the market is hot, you know, everyone runs their ads at, you know, one o'clock in the afternoon, your relevancy score isn't that great, right for whatever reason then you might be looking to spend upwards to 210 dollars for that click right so that's why it's so important to make sure you set up your whole entire campaign correctly and as relevant as possible so they can get words for as cheap as possible let me just show you dui keywords are going to be a little bit more expensive but let's search up criminal defense lawyer maybe it's not as bad all right so criminal defense lawyer so right here right now is bad competition we have low it's gonna be anywhere between 14 dollars to 38 dollars and 50 cents for a click okay so not as bad that is how you read that report okay how much to bid if we're doing manual cost per click and i'll show you how to do that later on you know i'll usually just pick like a number in the middle so i'll take like the average of 1371 3850 and I might just put, I might want to bid $24 on this keyword and see if I get any traffic out of it and adjust accordingly. If it's not getting any traffic, I'll increase $24 to $28 or something. And let's say we are getting a good amount of traffic and I want to see if I can get costs lower, then I might change $24 to $21, okay? So every dollar counts and you know we'll see if we can still get traffic with that. And if you are running an automated bidding strategy, for example, that Google only gave us that option earlier, they're gonna maximize for clicks and try to get you as many clicks as possible. This is the amount that you can expect to pay, right? Anywhere between $34.50 to upwards to $210 for this specific key word, all right? So now that we know our keyword, let's go back into our campaign here. Let me X that out. Enter our keywords. There are three different keyword match types. And I'll explain to you right here. If you just type in the word DUI lawyer, just like that, this is an example of a broad match okay and what broad match means is you can I mean you can click and learn more and get the definition there i'm just going to give you an easy definition the broad match keyword is dui lawyer then google is going to show your ad to anyone that they think it's going to be relevant to do you the keyword dui lawyer right so someone might search up about information about duis or how do, does duis work or how can i get out of a dui then google may show your ad to that person right because it's going to be a little bit more broad now the second match type is if you put it in parentheses dui lawyer this is an example this is an example of a phrase match so what that means is that the search term has to be in this exact order okay and anything can come after it any word can come after or before so let me give you an example someone might search up where can i find a dui lawyer right then your ad is going to show up for that specific keyword someone might search up where can i find a dui lawyer near me your ad is still going to show up because the word DUI lawyer is still in that order. But what if someone searched up, where can lawyer I DUI myself, right? It doesn't make sense. But what I'm trying to say here is that the word is not in order, right? The DUI lawyer is not in that specific order. So your ad is not going to show up for this search, right? So that's what that means. Now, the last one is exact match, and it's going to be in brackets, okay? DUI lawyer. What this means is that someone has to search up that specific exact search term in order for your ad to show up. So someone has to literally type in DUI lawyer in the search term in order for your ad to show up. So if you want to do DUI lawyer near me, by the way, capitalization doesn't matter, but if the word DUI lawyer near me is in brackets, then someone has to search up DUI lawyer near me in the search term in order for your Google, in order for your ad 
to show up. All right. So those are the three different match types. Hopefully that makes sense. And I broke it down as easy as possible, right? So here are really cool about Google. I mean, they want to help you as much as possible, right? So you, if you want to add more keywords, show your ads more often to people searching for your business offers, let's go ahead and view that. And look at this guys, there are 95 keywords that Google has recommended to you, right? So it takes out the brain power on having to look up what keywords you should be targeting for, okay? So look at all this, guys. And so you can just go through this and select the keywords that will best fit for this specific ad group, okay? Now, I know I typed in the word DUI here, so everything in this room is going to be about DUIs. Now, if you want it to be even more, more specific, and it's a strategy called SCAG. SCAG stands for Single Keyword Ad Group, and that means even more specific, right? So this ad group is all about DUI lawyers. So this room is specifically all about DUI lawyers, the keywords, the ads, everything is going to say DUI lawyer, there's not going to be no DUI attorneys, because you can create a whole separate room or another ad group and have it all about DUI attorneys. Okay. Now, I don't know how much that affects the relevancy score because I know Google, or I believe Google knows the difference between DUI, not the difference, but they, but Google understands that DUI lawyer and attorney is essentially the same thing. But if you want to just take it a step further, it's going to take more work, but it's going to be more organized and your relevancy score might be a little higher as well. Okay. So, um, you can choose to put, you know, just make it all about DUIs and then include the word, uh, DUI lawyer and DUI attorney all in the same ad group, or you can break apart two rooms, DUI lawyer, DUI attorney. Okay. So however you want to do that. All right. So let's just say we want to do it like this. Okay. DUI lawyer. Uh, and do I lower near me? Okay. And let's just say we go through here and you know, we like best DUI lawyer, DUI defense. Okay. So maybe I'll check that in DUI defense. Okay. Whatever keywords you want, enter into there and go ahead and keep scrolling down. All right. So there you have it. That is how you do your first keywords. All right, guys. So we're going to jump into ads now and here, you know, type in the final URL. So the URL that you want to direct the users to, and what you want to do is direct traffic site or traffic to your website that talks about DUIs. Okay. Because you don't want to, um, you don't want to when you don't want to have someone that searches up DUI and then you send them to like your homepage or like a page about just general criminal defense. Okay. So just for example here, let's say you go to the dentist to get an implant, right? A tooth implant. I don't know. You broke your front tooth broke. So you went to the dentist to, you know, fix your front implant. So you go to the dentist, get in there and then they put you, they make you go to room number two. You walk through room number two and it's about teeth whitening, right? You don't want that to happen. Okay. When you go into room number two, you want it to be about implants. Okay. You want to get your tooth fixed. You're not there to whiten your teeth. Okay. Now you got to leave room number two and then ask the front desk, Hey, what room is about the implant? And you know what? Just forget it. I'm going to go home. Okay. So you don't want that to happen. You want to send them to the right room that talks about the specific service or product that they search for. Okay. So that is the final URL display path is just, uh, just type in, you know, the relevant keywords here on a DUI lawyer and I don't know, free consultations or something like that. Okay. Call now, book now, whatever you want. Okay. This is going to show up like as a URL right here. Okay. So just for example, call me. there we go. As you can see here, campaign optimization score is increasing because we are filling all this out and it's very important that we fill all this out. Now look at this. Okay. So we can create a bunch of different headlines. We are, we're allowed to do 15 headlines so that Google can, you know, swap headlines one, two, and three, and see which headlines work the best to see which one, which ad will get the most clicks and all that good stuff. Cool thing is Google will also give you is uh, headline ideas. Okay. So you can click on more ideas here. And as you can see, it will give you a couple more ideas, nothing different from what they're already showing here. So headline number one, we might want to say DUI lawyer, Los Angeles, right? Because we're here. Headline number two, I don't know. Uh, they might offer a, a free consultation. Okay. Maybe they're affordable and have payment plans, right? 
So we can include all these type of headlines and what we want to talk about are the benefits for them, not the business, okay? We don't want to say, well, we can say things like five-star DUI lawyers, high success rate, okay? So you can put whatever here, but typically what I would recommend is having headlines that are going to get people to click, okay? You want to stand out and that's why they're called headlines, right? You want to stand out, you want to be bold, right? So, I mean, Imagine if this DUI lawyer had an offer for like, I don't know, $500 DUI lawyers or something, right? I don't know. A lot of people might click on that because that is so cheap, right? You can get a lot of clicks. Obviously, you can get more leads that are, have less money. They're expecting to spend 500 bucks, but you know, just get, that's how you're getting your creativity going. Okay. What can you, what are some things that can, you can say to get people to click on your ad and call your business? Okay. So those are all things for you to click on or think on, think about. Now uh, you have headlines written out. You have the option to pin your headline. Okay. So if you hover over each ad, you're going to see this pin and you can pin it to position one, two, or three. That is if you want the headline to be in a specific order. Okay. Um, if you don't, pin it, then Google is just going to automatically uh, cycle your headlines. You're going to, you know, test which, which headlines work where the best. You can leave it up to Google if you like, or you can pin it to position one, two, or three. Entirely up to you. Now, notice that you only get 30 characters in for the headlines. For description, you get up to 90 characters, okay? So you might say things like number one DY lawyer in Los Angeles, right? Uh, call now. Call now for a free consultation. You know, we done lots of DUI cases, okay? So whatever you want to say, as long as it fits 90 characters, obviously we're a little bit over. Site link extensions, call extensions. I'm not going to go over extensions in this video, but just know that extensions are important. Uh, it's very simple, right? So for example, call out extensions is just kind of like, hi it highlights the parts of your businesses, right? So you only get 25 characters. Let's just say, you know, five-star DUI lawyer, okay? So it's going to show up in the description like bottom of your description in your ads, okay? So this is kind of like, it just shows, uh, I don't know, like it's cool little details about your businesses, I would say, I guess. So five-star DUI lawyer, I don't know, you might want to highlight free consultations 24 seven or something. Uh, you want to have four uh, call out extensions, okay? You can add more if you want and Google's gonna only do four at a time, but it'll cycle through, okay? So you can do that. New site links, I'm not gonna talk too much about that. Add URL options, you don't need to do any of that. And from there, once you're done, just go ahead and hit done. And you know what, I'll show you how to do site links extensions. Okay, so site link extensions are essentially this. All right, guys, sorry, here we go. All right, so site link extensions are basically just little links on the ad itself that kind of just adds real estate to your ad. It makes it a little bit bigger for, for people to click on, okay? Just more opportunities for people to click on. I could not find an example of that, but uh, you know, these are, these are okay, these are might be site link extensions right here. So our firm, contact us, see our results. So these are site link extensions because if you click on it, it'll take them to a specific site, okay? A site link extension. So that's what all that is. It just adds a little bit more real estate for people to click on. So you can really just, you know, contact us now. I don't know. Description, add in some descriptions, and then the final URL, you want to send them to the page that is relevant. Okay, so that's all that site link extension is. Hit done once you're done there. Um, and once you're done there, you got our ad. You can add in more ads. I recommend having a minimum of three ads uh, so that you can test out different ads and see which one works the best. Okay, so you wanna have three ads minimum running at all times, so you can test things out, all right? We can click next. You can set your budget however you wanna set. You can set a custom budget for daily. So let's just say you wanna spend $100 a day, you type in $100 a day. If you wanna spend $25 a day, type in $25, okay? Click next, and your campaign is almost ready to publish, okay? So uh, your ad has one issue. You know, obviously we didn't, have, we didn't put in the final URL, so I'm gonna get that issue, but you shouldn't once you have put in the URL, okay? So your campaign not almost, okay. So that is pretty much it, guys. That's how you, you know, get, get your first campaign going. I'm gonna click X here, and we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the campaign. So congratulations, guys. You guys have launched your campaign. Give it a couple hours. Maybe it might take some time for Google to approve your ads and then for it to start showing and be live and all that good stuff, okay? 
So if you don't see your campaign, no worries. You can see all your dashboard here, your impressions, how many times your ads have been shown, how many times you got clicked, what the average cost per click looks like and how much you have spent, okay? Now, if you don't see the sidebar, click on this arrow and you should see the campaign. And if you don't see the campaign here, click on the three button here, campaign status, and you can click all or all but remove, we'll click all. And since I haven't launched that campaign, I guess it never popped up here, okay? So that is essentially how you launch your campaign, guys. Right here resume campaign draft in case we forgot how to do that so let me go ahead and just let me see if i can just launch it for you guys so we can okay let's view it let's click next here air here so we're gonna put test there test.com or actually i think i have the option to just delete this if i delete it then google will allow me to launch the campaign and then i can resume with my example okay look so we can publish the campaign now. so the campaign cannot run ads which is fine we'll just publish the campaign but it won't run okay so congratulations we are now officially launched as you can see the campaign has shown up here if you don't see it click on the side arrow button there and look at this criminal defense lower campaign and our number and our one room is duis it's gonna be all about dui lower keywords there and if you want to add in more ad groups then or more rooms just click on your campaign click on ad groups click that plus sign and it'll take you back to that one page where you can you know add your keywords and create more ads okay so let's go ahead and leave if you want to create more campaigns let's say you don't want to do criminal defense you want to talk about something else or target a different area click campaign same thing the plus sign new campaign and you can just start all from scratch again all right so from here let's go through the different tabs right guys i'm going i'm diving in deep for you guys and i'm giving you guys seven million dollars worth of knowledge all right so drop a thumbs up if this is gold to you guys this is no one else is giving you guys a comprehensive free course like this people charge a lot of money for this type of google ads course and they probably have not managed this much amount of data and, and money okay so you guys are getting a ton of data show some love in the comment section let me know that you guys love this gold okay pot of gold video all right so drop it in the comment section and subscribe to show your appreciation and i would really appreciate it all right so let's go ahead let's go to the overview this is going to show you the overview of the campaign obviously it's not running right now recommendations google is going to recommend you know some things for you to improve your campaign obviously look you got to set up your payment method for your account to start running uh call out extensions are missing so you might want to include some call out extensions there and so you can go through all of that insights you can take a look at this tab and get insight on how your campaign is doing on a week to week basis ad groups it's going to show your all your ad groups in one tab here so we only have one ad group auction insight and going on there ads if we haven't created any ads which is where we you know did the headline stuff I already showed you how to do that assets is basically our extensions okay so we can click the plus sign and we can add site links call out call extensions all these other ones that you want to include okay the more call more extensions you have the better but only if it is relevant to your business okay so don't just don't put a bunch of extensions that are irrelevant i would say the most important ones for a local business like yourself you want to do site link extension you want to do call out extension structure snip is nice you know and it's cool if you highlight over it it's going to show like what this extension does right so it's going to show links to specific pages of your website call out descriptive text of your business right so free shipping free consultations open 24 7 things like that structure snippet it's going to highlight specific aspects of your product or service uh and call it's going to encourage calls to your business so on your ad it's going to be a phone number they can include when you click on this option and then people can just click on the number and call you directly so one two three four and the last extension that i would want to include is the location extension and it's just going to show your business address and information right so if i go back here so right here this is the example of the location extension as you can see 135 south state college boulevard all right so that is what location extension is okay and it just adds to your ad okay it looks a lot better than not having it just make sure ad look a little bit bigger it takes up a little bit more real estate okay so we're already done looking at that so those are the five extensions i would that that you really need okay uh lead forms and apps promotion affiliate location uh don't really need those are the five most important ones okay landing pages that's that's just the ads uh, where you're directing your ads to your traffic to keywords you can add more keywords if you like okay so if you want to add to a specific ad group so we can click on the ad group and we can start typing in more ad groups in here okay negative keywords i'm not going to go over too much in this specific training video i talk about more in my course because i actually get i have a whole ultimate negative keywords list that you can literally just copy and paste into this and what negative keywords is is basically it's going to filter out all the irrelevant 
search terms, right? So for example, what if someone searches up cheap DUI lawyer, right? Now we don't want to show our ads to people who are looking up for cheap because maybe we're not cheap. Uh, someone might search up for $50 DUI lawyer, okay? And again, we don't charge our services for $50. So we would want the word cheap. We would want the words like $50 in our negative keywords list here. People might be searching up, you know, how to become a DUI lawyer, DUI lawyer schools, right? And our ads are going to show up and now we're wasting money on those clicks and we're wasting money, right? So we want to have an extensive negative keywords list. My negative keywords list is upwards to 2000 words in the negative list. And it's going to filter out as many searches as possible so that we're not getting irrelevant searches and the searches that do come in are all relevant. And when we do get a click, we are spending money on clicks that is going to most very likely turning into money for the business. Okay. So that's just negative keywords list there. All right. Search terms. This is where we go and we can see what everybody is searching, what our ads are showing up for. So, you know, all the search terms, right? What people are searching up for and how our ads are showing up. So you'll be able to see what people are searching up for and when your ads are showing up. So it's really important that we go through search terms actually, because then we can start seeing what our ads are showing up for when people are searching for something. And let's just say if someone, if our ads is, if someone is searching up DUI lower jobs and it shows up right here, then we see, then we know that we don't want our ads to show up for that specific search, right? So we would add the word jobs to the negative keyword. So search terms is used for that. Auction insight, we're not gonna go into that. Audiences, I'm not really gonna go into too much details this either, but essentially you can target people by age, gender, and even their household income if Google has a data on that specific person. Otherwise it would fall into the unknown category. Settings is how we set up our campaign earlier. Now, one thing about it here, one thing that we can change that we could not change earlier was the our bidding strategy okay which we were only set to maximize clicks meaning that google is going to bid accordingly to get us the most clicks as possible on our campaign now what i'd recommend we do if you are a marketing agency and you know you're running ads for other people then Ideally, or if you're running for yourself, ideally would want to click on select a bid strategy directly, not recommended, right? And you want to click on this option here. You want to go to manual CPC, okay? You can keep that unchecked. Don't worry about that for now. Manual CPC is going to allow you to control the how much you want to bid on your keywords. And remember, we used a keyword planner earlier, so we know what the average or how much we should be spending about between the low amount and the high amount, okay? So that's manual CPC. But let's just say you're brand new to this. You don't wanna worry about that. You don't wanna go in and change, you know, bidding on your specific keyword. You wanna just allow Google to take care of it, okay? Maximize clicks will work, okay? Don't worry about these three other options. Maximize conversions when you have more data and, you know, Google knows what is a conversion for your business. That's when you wanna use that strategy. But in the beginning, you don't have data. You're starting from scratch. Maximize clicks is your best bet, okay? And if you want to be a little bit more cool, advanced, go manual CPC, you have more control over everything, right? So that's that. I'll just go back to leave it as is. And that is the settings. We already set our locations. We can add things here and there. We can exclude locations, okay? So let's say there are specific neighborhoods that we don't want to run, okay? So maybe, I don't know, we don't like Beverly Hills, okay? So Beverly Hills, people might be a little too bougie for our taste and we don't want to go out there or whatever, okay? So Beverly Hills, we can just add that in. There's a put, you know, about 237 people in that area. So we'll exclude it and Google is not gonna show our ads to people in this red zone, okay? So super simple. Ad schedule, we can change things up and add things, we can take things away. We can change this to a 12 hour clock. So it makes more sense to some of you guys, right? So you can change all that up there. And uh, once you start getting data, you can start breaking down by days and hours. It's gonna tell you exactly, you know, what your data looks like on what days perform the best, what hours perform the best. You know, you can make adjustments to when you should be running your campaign to maximize your dollars, okay? Devices, all right? Do you wanna run your ads on computer, phones, and tablets, all three, that's fine. Uh, let's just say for whatever reason, you don't wanna show your ads to people who are on like their tablets, okay? So what you can do is uh, decrease this bid to 100%. This means that your ad will not show to tablets, okay? Let's say you only wanna pay 50%. So let's just say um, you're willing to pay $10 for a specific keyword, but if they're coming from tablets, then you only want to spend up to $5. That's all that. All right, so that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, we went through all this tab right here. Super amazing. So far, one last thing I'm going to go with over with you guys is adding conversion tracking codes, okay? So 
that's super important. You do not want to be flying blind when you are running Google ads because you want to know where your leads are coming from. You want to know what specific keyword is working, which ad is working. And the only way to do that is if you're tracking your conversions. Okay. So let's go into tools and settings under measurements. We'll click on conversions. All right. And let's go ahead and set up a new converge conversion action. Now there's two things that you want uh, to track. Number one is website. Number two is phone calls. Number one, let's go to website. Let's just say you can type in your or website domain here. I'm not going to go too much into details with this one because Google is going to give you the instructions on how to do it. But type in your website and um, Google will give you the instructions on how to start tracking leads for your business. All right. Um, for when they come into your business, um, new conversion action for phone calls. This one is really important. You want to set one up for each one of these options. Okay. I'm going to show you one example calls to a phone number on your website. Let's just say that for example, continue. And we're going to name this calls on website. Okay. So this means that someone clicked on your ad and they called the phone number on your website. That means that is a lead for your business. And we want to count that as a conversion. So we want to know which keyword they searched up, which ad they clicked on that led to that conversion. Right. And so as that piles up, we're going to see more data. We're going to see what works and what doesn't work. And then we can start changing up strategies to maximize our dollar amount to get more leads, right? Value. I don't know. Maybe that phone call might be worth a dollar amount for you, right? Most of the time, We'll just use don't use the value for this conversion action because maybe they're just calling in for an inquiry or information, right? So you just don't use value. That's fine. The count, we want to do one conversion, okay? Let's just say that one lead might have called five times. That's still only one lead. We only want to count that as one conversion, okay? If you are a different case scenario for whatever reason, then you can click on that option. Meaning if, if that one lead called five times, that's going to count as five conversions, okay? Um, most of the time, it's going to be one count, okay? One person one lead, they might call them five, 10, 10 times. So they're gonna count one conversion. Destination number, okay? What is the number that you're using, right? So what number, are, uh, what's the number that phone numbers callers should reach when they call from your website, okay? So if you're using a call tracking number, if you're using a, your, your business number, just put that in right here. Display number, what are people actually seeing, okay? And you would put that there. Call length, now this is really important because some calls or a lot of calls might actually get dropped. And that is why I like to set it at one second. You can set it to 10 seconds. And what this means is that someone has to be on that call for at least 10 seconds in order for it to count one conversion. Okay. So for example, if I put one second, that means that every single call that connects is counted as one conversion, um, even if it gets dropped or for whatever reason. But in your case, a good lead might be a minimum of 10 seconds. So you only want to count leads that are good. So you might want to put 10 seconds, or if you know that's 30 seconds, we would put 30 seconds. Okay. So it's entirely up to you on what the minimum is to you, but you don't want to go something crazy like five minutes, right? If you were put in five minutes, not every, you're not going to get enough data. The campaign's not going to be able to record enough conversions for your data. Okay. Attribution model you can just go data driven or last click. I've, I've been using last click, but it's not really going to make or break your campaign from there. You just go ahead and click create and continue Sample here for you guys. So, and don't worry about click through conversion, create and continue. So from here, you can email the tag. You can use it Google tag manager. Or you can install the tag yourself. Okay. You, you would just send this to a web, your web developer if uh, you have one, but essentially this code goes on the, your, your page. Okay. The tag goes on every page of your website and the header. And that way Google is going to be able to track on your website. And then this phone number will also go on the header uh, where your phone number appears, right? So whatever website, whatever page it has your phone number, you want that tag on that specific page. I would just put it on every single page because they might see it and they might call it from their own phone or something, or th that's on a whole different page. So you just want to track it, right? So just put this on all the pages. So from there, just click next and hit done. From there, you'll be able to see calls on website show up right here. Okay. And that's how you created your own conversion uh, first conversion. So congrats. All right. So guys, that is the full walkthrough of how to run Google ads for any local service based businesses. I've dropped so much knowledge for you guys. Uh, we manage over $7 million. My Google ads agency has, you know, generated seven figures for myself and I literally just handed this all over to you guys. So just show some love, drop a thumbs up, lots of thumbs up, show some love in the comment section and subscribe to the channel if you have already. And if you want to dive in deep, see, get the behind the scenes and get templates and scripts on key, exact keywords 
literally copy and paste my own campaigns that I've created. There will be a link in the description. You can literally get, you know, get into my program. I'll teach you how to run Google ads for specific niches, how to get clients, how to scale your agency and all that good stuff. I have a course on that. You guys can check it out. Um, if you guys want to check out a free masterclass, I've created a full free training masterclass video. It'll break down my three systems on how I was able to start my agency from zero dollars, a little to no investment while working from home, didn't have any marketing experience or anything like that. And I'm going to show you exactly how I was able to grow my marketing agency from zero to now seven figures. We're, all, we're generating about $50,000, over $50,000 every single month. So if you want to learn how I was able to do that, check out the free masterclass. I have tons of resources, Facebook groups, all that good stuff. Want to connect with me? I'm in a free Facebook group. That link is also in the description below. Thank you for joining. Show some love. My name is Jordan. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Yeah, the next video.